Like I think all the candidates in this race, to make this country a better and happier country. It's what it comes down to in the end. I think we have to both address the really big issues. So adult social care is a disgrace, the way that we look after our elderly, and we're all going to become older. And we need a proper public insurance system so that it's not a lottery whether you have to sell your house to look after yourself, you have dementia. We need to get the state involved in looking after people better when they're older. But we also have to address a thousand daily injustices in life. So I don't want my constituents going in to visit a dying parent in hospital and come out and get a fine on their car in the hospital car park. I don't want people like Philip Green getting knighthoods if they're stealing 500 million pounds from pension pots and not paying British taxes. So we have to do both things. We have to do the big things, make people safe in the streets, sort out the police, invest in education, tackle adult social care, but we also need to get on with dealing with the thousand daily injustices of life. My plan for delivering Brexit is the only plan, which is to take it through Parliament. There are many other people out here who are selling ferry stories. They think that if they shout very loudly, I want to get Brexit done, or they say, I'm going to get Brexit done by the 31st of October, they don't need to explain how they're going to get it done. The question again and again is how. So for example, with Boris, the question is, is he going to try to lock the doors of Parliament? If he isn't, how is he going to get it through Parliament? So my plan is to come back immediately afterwards with a fresh mandate, take the politics out of it, say the country voted to get Brexit done, let us get a deal through Parliament. In the end, that's what it comes down to. And there's no magic to it. It's about negotiation, it's about talking to people, it's about making sure that people see that the public is engaged and they want this done. So if there was a magic answer to this, Brexit would have been done already. We live in a parliamentary democracy. There just is a parliament. You've got to work with parliaments. You need 45 more votes. There were 270 votes for the agreement. We need to get 45 more on board. Some of those will have to come from Conservatives. Some will have to come from Labour. Why am I different to the last Prime Minister? The question is asked again and again. The answer is, I'm a professional negotiator. I would be coming in with a fresh mandate. I'm not setting red lines and I'm being straight with people. I'm being straight with the public that this isn't easy. Being straight with MPs that it isn't easy. But if I am elected by the Conservative Party members, I am in a much more powerful position than the Prime Minister was because I will have come in able to say to every Conservative MP, the members voted for me. They voted for me to take this deal through. You're now not just defying the Prime Minister and saying this is against the manifesto. You're now going to have to answer to the Conservative Party members and that'll begin to move things. No, I think she was a very good negotiator at working, in fact, with Europe. If you read the 500 pages of that document, it's a much better deal than people understand. Many people criticizing it, I feel, have not got into the details of that. That controls immigration, it stops us paying money endlessly to Europe. It makes sure that in the end, we leave the Parliament, the Commission, but that we also get frictionless access, trade access to European markets. That was a great negotiation. The problem has been in Parliament not with the European Union. I'm not setting any red lines. I need to get Brexit done, which means I need to bring Parliament with me. It's about not being in trenches, not taking political positions. But one thing that I think is very important for your readers and for me is our economy. I represent a farming district in Britain. A no-deal Brexit would be catastrophic for the farming industry. And this isn't just Project Fear, it's just the facts. Cheddar would come in from Ireland at 2,600, uh, sorry, 2,000 pounds, and we'd have to export at 2,600 pounds. That's the end of the cheddar industry. Beef would come in from Brazil and Argentina, 20, 30% lower than we can produce it. That's the end of the beef industry. Motor industry employs a million people, 850,000 people in this country. Those parts cross the channel six, seven times in the making of a car. If we have a hard border between us and Europe, that is a big, big problem for the motor industry. And the people pushing for a no-deal Brexit have said this. They've said the motor industry is going to go, and we don't mind because we're going to move on and we're going to find other jobs for these people. But nobody's listening to this. Nobody's hearing them. I want to call them out. I want them to be honest. This is about trust. No, 
know, I voted for the Prime Minister's deal. I was asked in a dictative vote what my second preference would be because I'm trying to get a deal through. If we couldn't get the Prime Minister's deal through, then less good, but a second preference could be something like that. That's what Turkey has with the EU. That's not being in the EU. That's leaving all the institutions of the EU, but having zero tariff access to European markets. Being able to sell, if we want to sell tens of millions of electric cars into Europe in the next 20 years, we're going to have to have some form of customs arrangement to allow us to do that. I think that if he is saying that he can get us out of Europe by the 31st of October on his plan, he is misleading himself and he's misleading the country. He hasn't told us how he's going to do it and it's not good enough to jump up and down and say, I'm going to do it. This is a parliamentary democracy. He needs to try to explain, as I've been trying to explain to you, how he would negotiate this through Parliament, and we're not hearing anything about that at all. It is important, this issue of trust. If people are going into this race promising things that they can't deliver, it's not going to last very long. The public are going to find them out, however excited they are at the moment, and we're going to collapse into a general election. No, I will block no deal. I want to leave the European Union. I don't want to revoke. I don't want to remain. I don't want a second referendum. But if it's a choice between no deal and... It won't be. Parliament is sovereign. The only reason that no deal is the legal default is that Parliament made it the legal default. Parliament's the only law-making body in the country. Parliament can unmake it the legal default. And that is what I would do. The majority of colleagues in Parliament are against no deal because no deal would be a very bad idea. Well, my life has been a, a life full of very strange things. I served my country in Iraq, in the Balkans, in Indonesia. I was in Afghanistan for five years. So I sometimes, when people ask me this question, I remember sitting with a KGB officer when I was working for the government who said to me about two o'clock in the morning, I have broken, Rory, every one of the Ten Commandments. And I said to him, my, my goodness, that, that's terrible. And he said, yes, I have even not respected my mother and father. So it's quite difficult for me to answer that question if you've spent a lot of time in war zones. But my mother's answer to the question is that when I was nine, having read a, a, a Tintin book and seen somebody sit on a cactus, I went and sat on a cactus. So she spent an hour and a half picking prickles out of my bum. <laughs>